Um, so our next um, vaccine to think about, and this is very important for you as competitors, is influenza. Um, influenza is a very prevalent viral disease. It's a respiratory disease. Uh, the FEI requires an initial series. Now, there's a lot of misunderstanding about this, so take notes, because this, I'm telling you, veterinarians, veterinary delegates, stewards, trainers get this mixed up. So listen, I'm going to give you the skinny on this, okay? The FEI requires an initial series followed by boosters with passport documentation. Now, what do you mean by an initial series? We vaccinate the horse day one, today. 21 to 92 days from now, we give it its second shot, okay? No sooner than 21 days by FEI rules, no more than 92 days by FEI rules, okay? And that, follow, that falls into an acceptable period for booster immunization. You allow the body to react initially to the first vaccine to start initial immunization reaction and antibodies being formed, and then you come back 21 to 92 days later and give the horse a booster which augments its immune response and gives you a stronger immunity. Now, here's a caveat. By FEI rules, they must have a booster within seven months or the initial series is not valid, okay? And that's what a lot of people miss, right? They must have a booster again within seven months. It doesn't have to be seven months. It could be four months. It could be five months. It could be six months. But there's probably no value in giving it any sooner than about four months. But it must have one. Okay? Then... Is that, Rick, is that within seven months of the second booster? Of the second shot. Yeah. Yes. And then, yearly, if you're not going to a horse show, and that's a misconception by a lot of people. Oh, I've got to get them vaccinated every six months. No, you don't. Not if you're not competing. If you're not competing, annual revaccination is sufficient. So say, for example, you have a young horse, you know, a, a three, four-year-old. You're just getting really working, riding a little bit. You're not competing him yet, but you want to get his initial passport stuff started for whatever reason. Then that horse doesn't need to be vaccinated but yearly. But... All horses must be vaccinated within six months and 21 days of an event, okay? So that's where the six month rule seems to come from, but it's a misconception of what the rule really is, okay? So if your horse, if you showed last time you showed was March and you vaccinated in February and you're gonna, you're gonna show again here in February, your horse is going to need to be vaccinated at least by January. Uh, otherwise, you could wait till February, but no more than a year from when you vaccinated him before. You follow me? Okay. So it provides a, a little relief there when the horse is not actually going to horse shows and they don't actually have to be vaccinated. But remember the seven-month thing. That's really important because I've had I've seen a lot of as a veter as functioning as a veterinary delegate, I've seen some errors in passports where. People had to go back and get an initial series all over again. So they had to go back and get shot one and two again and then start over. Okay? Okay. Um, <clears throat> rhinopneumonitis, not required by the FEI, but it's a nasty respiratory disease, as you know, and there are some forms of it that can actually have neurologic uh, effects. Uh, the immune response to the virus causes inflammation in the spinal cord and um, in, in the base of the brain and it can be a really nasty disease and can cause paralysis. Uh, now that's the neurotropic strain. There's another strain that causes abortion and a strain that just causes respiratory signs and high fevers. It's impossible initially to tell them apart until you do uh, very sophisticated uh, PCR analysis and so forth. Uh, but uh, we do those tests whenever we have a fever of unknown origin that is quite high and persistent, uh, doesn't respond immediately to uh, antipyretics, fever drugs, then we'll, we'll test those horses by swabbing their nose and taking blood and so forth to make sure that they don't have the neurotrophic form of VHV, uh, which uh, can be uh, 
a need for isolating the horse, quarantining the premises, and so forth. But rhinopneumonitis is now required along with influenza for all USEF competitions. And that rule is six months, okay? It's not required for an FEI competition if you go to Europe to show, okay? But it's required if you're gonna compete in a USEF competition here in the United States. So uh, just keep that in mind. And it must be within six months of an event. But it can be, there's one other little caveat about the influenza vaccine. For FEI, you cannot give it within seven days of competing. And maybe someone wants to enlighten me, but I believe they modified that rule for USEF where you can for USEF shows, but not for an FEI event. Okay? So, um, and, it, and that's for flu. Well, I can say rhino's not required for FEI events, but if that FEI event is functioning under USEF rules, you do have to vaccinate the rhino, okay? Right? Very often these two viruses are, vac are, are combined, okay? So, and my recommendation, quite frankly, is given every four months, both of them. And then you're not gonna get caught with a problem. Okay? And it's not too frequent immunization, but I think any more often than every four months is too frequent. And there may actually be some counterproductive effects from vaccinating too.